Autolite and its 98,000 dealers present... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a special program for this holiday season. The unusual dramatization of... Twas the Night Before Christmas, starring Miss Greer Garson, who appears by arrangement with MGM, producers of the new color picture, Knights of the Round Table, in Cinemascope, starring Robert Taylor, Ava Gardner, and Mel Ferrer. Good evening, this is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite. Tonight, as a special Christmas presentation from the worldwide Autolite family, we bring you Miss Greer Garson in a story about a certain little girl on a certain Christmas Eve. And now, Autolite presents transcribed, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas," hoping once again to keep you in... Suspense! Honey, come on, wake up. <laughs> wake up, Kathy. It's the day before Christmas. Oh, and there's so much oh, to Miss be Buff, done. it's light out already. You said you were going to wake me really early today so we could go to the airport and meet them. Come on, up you get. Let's get you dressed. Buffy, they're going to be waiting for me and you didn't wake me. I know what, they're home already. Kathy. Mommy! Daddy, where are you? Daddy! Mommy! Buffy, they're not in their bedroom. Where are they? Kathy. I know. I'll bet they're in the kitchen already having their coffee. Mom! Miss Buff, they're not home. I know, honey. The clock in the kitchen said 8.30. Kathy, here, put this on, dear. You told me you wanted to wear this dress today. So that's why I ironed it for you. Miss Buff. Yes, dear? Why aren't they here? Oh, they'll be here. But when I talked to Mommy on the telephone yesterday, she said she would be here at 6 this morning. And I promised her I'd meet her at the airport, her and Daddy. I know, I know. And Daddy said he had a surprise he was bringing for me all the way from Paris. It's 8.30, Buffy. Let's go out to the airport now. Oh, but there's so many things to do. First, you've got to get your breakfast, and we have to finish decorating the tree. And, uh, oh, there's so many things I want you to help oh, me with. Oh, everything can wait, Buffy. Hurry, I promised to meet them. Uh, no, dear. Why not, Buff? Well, I think we'll we'll wait for them here. Kathy? Yes? You remember what you promised your mommy and dad? That you'd do everything I asked you while they were away? Yes. Then, uh... We'll wait for them here, hmm? All right, Buffy. It's noon, Buffy. I know. Don't you think they might have called and told us they'd be late? Oh, I'll go and make our lunch. You must be very hungry. No, I'm not. Oh, you didn't eat your breakfast, Kathy. Miss Buff, I'm not hungry. Look. Oh, look, it's snowing, honey. We'll have a nice warm lunch, and then we'll go out for a long walk. Hmm? They should have called. I'll tell you what, Kathy. We'll take our walk first. We'll see the shops. We'll visit. We'll go and see Johnny and your aunt and uncle. Maybe if it snows hard enough, we can all build a snowman. Wouldn't you like that? Yes, that would be fun. <laughs> well, go get your coat and hat and galoshes, dear. All right. And when, when we come back, Mommy and Daddy will be home. Well, you go and get your things now. Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it, Buffy. Mommy. Oh, who's this, Daddy? You sound... All from a newspaper. I see. It's a man, Buff. He says he wants to talk to an older person. Here. Hello? Yes, this is the Harper residence. I'm the housekeeper. I... Uh, well, just a moment, please. Uh, Kathy. Who is it? Someone wants to talk to me, honey. Will you go get your things? No. Who 
you talking to, Buck? Never mind, dear. Go and get your things. No. No, I won't. Hello? Uh, I, I see. Yes. Yes, I saw the papers. Uh, yes, yes, that was the daughter. Yes, the only child. No, she doesn't. No. No, no, I wish you wouldn't. Please, don't hear. No. Who was it? Oh, it was just a man, honey. It was from the newspapers. Why? What did he want? Nothing. He asked about me, didn't he? Why? Honestly, honey, it was nothing. It was about Mommy and Daddy. Well, it wasn't anything important. Well... Yes, dear? I don't know. Look at that snow coming down, Kathy. Hmm. Get your things, dear. Go on. They sing beautifully, Kathy. Very lovely. The street and all the decorations and the singers. It's very lovely, Miss Buck. Honey, here, give this to the man. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Missy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's go home now. In a little while, don't you remember? We were going visiting, too. Mommy and Daddy are probably home right now, waiting for me, wondering where I am. And we'll build a snowman together, like I said. Come on, honey. I remember when I was a little girl how excited I'd get. Oh, all the wonderful things to see, the sights and the smells and, and the sounds. Pretty shop windows and the snow. To be a little girl at Christmas time. To be young at Christmas time. And happy and... What's the matter, Buffy? Oh, Kathy. Buffy. Let me hold you. Oh, Kathy, darling. Buffy, you're crying. I'm just silly, I guess. Why, look, there's Santa Claus watching us. Let's say hello to him. You were crying. Hello, Santa. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas, little girl. Merry Christmas. Well, you're a pretty little girl. What's your name? Kathy. Oh, that's a nice name for a nice little girl like you. Thank you. And I can tell you've been a good little girl. I saw the way your mommy was holding you. She's Miss Buff. My mommy's away. Daddy, too. We're taking a walk to make them come home. Oh, and where are they? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Kathy. Kathy, come in, darling. And Miss Buff. How are you? Come in, come in. Mother! Mother, guess who's here? Why, Kathy and Miss Buff. Hello, Aunt Lee. Hello, Mrs. Cleveland. Yeah. Take your things off. We've got a big fire in the living room. And wait till you see our Christmas tree, Kathy. I'm sure it's very beautiful. I'll bet Kathy came to see her cousin Johnny, didn't she? <laughs> yes, I did, Uncle Ted. I would like to see him very much. Uh, do you know what that boy of mine did, Miss Buff? No. He found the train. Oh, he did? After I took so much trouble to hide them out in the garage, he found them. So, of course, I had to set them up for him. Well, it's the day before Christmas. He's uh, in his room now, Kathy. Yes, I would like to play with the train. Of course you would. Johnny! I can't come out, Daddy. I'm busy. Kathy's here. Hey, come on up and play with my trains, Kathy. You ought to see. I got them all hitched up now. Go on, Kathy. All right. I've been on the phone since seven this morning, Miss Buff, and there just isn't any word at all about the plane. Look! 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 
A man from the newspaper called the house. I told him to stay away. Did the child know? <laughs> I, I think she does. What did you tell her? Nothing. How do you tell a child, Mrs. Cleveland? Look at it go! What I can't understand is why no word at all. The plane took off from Paris on time, and there was radio contact over Ireland, from what I could find out. But since then, nothing. You'd better tell her, John. Tell me what? Well, there was a storm oh. over the ocean. Pretty bad storm. They said... Miss Buff. Yes, darling? I've just figured out something. It's about Mommy and Daddy. Oh, Kathy. They're not coming home. They're not ever coming home. Autolite is bringing you Miss Greer Garson with Anne Whitfield as Kathy in Twas the Night Before Christmas. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. This is Harlow Wilcox again with a message from Mr. Royce G. Martin president and chairman of the Electric Autolite Company. It is presented in the name of the Autolite family, which includes some 30,000 Autolite men and women and their families, 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite, as well as 98,000 dealers and the greatest names in the industry who use Autolite products as original equipment. This is the message from Mr. Martin. In our America... We are especially blessed this Christmas with a free country. We are surrounded with freedom-loving people who appreciate the word Christmas. We are grateful for what this day means to all of us and for what it meant to our great forefathers. We will never forget the one whose holy birthday we are about to celebrate. We thank him for the word freedom and the happiness that he has given us. We of the Autolite family wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and a new year filled with health and happiness. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Greer Garson in Elliot Lewis's production of Twas the Night Before Christmas. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. It's going to be good to get inside of the house, Kathy. Oh, look at you. You look almost like the snowman you and Johnny built. Here, let me brush you off a bit before we go inside. There's a man there. What not you say, darling? Right there, standing by the door. A man. Hello. Good evening, miss. Hello, little girl. Is this your house? Yes, I live here. Who are you? What do you want? Well, then you'd be the Harper's little girl, wouldn't you? Yes? I asked you, who are you? Now, don't worry about it, ma'am. I just want to take a picture of the little girl. You want your picture taken, little girl? Buffy. You're the reporter I talked to this morning, aren't you? And uh, we'll want one of you, too, ma'am. Here, get in the house, Kathy. Don't stand there, dear. Get in the house. I'll be in in a moment. It's Christmas Eve, Mr. Reporter. Did you know that? Oh, now, look, ma'am. I've it's got Christmas to... Eve. Where is your heart? Now, look, you've got to understand. I talked to you on the phone. It was almost ten hours ago, before noon. It's nighttime already. There still isn't any word about the plane. I represent a newspaper, ma'am. We've got to assume... Well, you know, I don't want to say it any more than you do. Oh, just go away. Oh, now, really, I've got to... Were you, were you ever lonely on Christmas Eve? Alone in a house that's empty? Well, outside, other people were singing... When there was warmth and love and joy, but outside, I'm just trying to. Christmas do my... Eve, the snow is falling. Christmas Eve, a 
But the child is... is grieving. Yeah. I'm sorry. Good night. Kathy? I'm in the living room, Buffy. I, I just had a wonderful thought. Yes? Let's have a secret. What, Buffy? Let's not wait till tomorrow. What do you mean? We go to our tree and open some of our presents now. Maybe just one. Hmm? We'll choose the one with the most beautiful wrapping. You can open it and you can play with it now while I go and fix something for you to eat. I'm not hungry, Buff. Honestly, I'm oh, not. Oh, just some milk and cookies, honey. You haven't eaten All some... right. Well, well, let's choose. Go ahead, pick one. All right. That one. Mm-hmm. It's, uh... It's from Mr. and Mrs. Anderson next door. Open it. You open it, Buffy. Very well. Oh, look. Very nice. A carousel. Well, I wind it for you. And we'll put it down here. Now. Oh, that's sweet. You watch it. When it runs down, you can wind it up again. I'm going into the kitchen. Kathy, here's your... Kathy. Kathy, honey, where are you? Kathy? Your milk and cookies are on the table. Kathy? Are you in your room, Kathy? Kathy? Kathy, honey? Kathy! Miss Buff. Mr. Anderson, is Kathy here? Well, I know who is. Uh... Uh, would you mind asking Mrs. Anderson if Kathy's here? Maybe she came in through the back way. Well, Mrs. Anderson and I have been sitting in the living room for the last hour. Well, what's the matter, Miss Buff? Kathy ran out of the house. Oh, poor child. I can imagine how she must well, feel. I thought she might have come over here next door. She just ran out of the house. I don't know where she is. Oh, a child like that and what's happened to her today. Now, wait. I'll get my coat, Miss Buff. I'll come with you. <laughs> Paul, listen. Hi, Mr. Anderson. Want a ride? You can go all the way down the hill for three blocks. They've got roped off. Uh, Paul, have you seen Kathy? Sure. Well, where is she? I don't know. Where is she, Paul? Where did she go? How am I supposed to know where she went? But you saw her, didn't you? Sure. She was running down the block. I yelled at her to come on over, but she kept running. Uh, which way, Paul? Down there, I guess. Where the stores are. Uh, thank you. Sure. Merry Christmas, Mr. Anderson. Merry Christmas, Miss Buff. Hey, watch! She hasn't been in my store, Miss Buff, and I, I'm i the only one on the block who's open. Last-minute Christmas rush, you know. Thank you, Mr. Ruxton. Say, now, that kid and what happened to that plane today, I'd sure let the police know she was missing. I think he's right, Miss Buff. Call them, please. Call them. Oh, uh, use this phone, Mr. Anderson. Oh, thank you. Uh, hello, operator. Uh, give me the police. Uh, oh, hello, police. I want to report a little girl who's missing. Uh-huh. Kathy Harper. Well, she's got blonde hair and blue eyes. And... Uh, oh, wait a second. I'll find out. <laughs> Just go in the house, Miss Buff. I'm sure they'll find her. It's ten o'clock. They've been looking for three hours. Oh, well, they have ways. They'll find her. We waited in that station house. All the policemen who phoned in. None of them. Well, you just go in the house. Now, I'll send Mrs. Anderson over. No, no, really. I'd, I'd rather you wouldn't. 
Well. Good night, Mr. Anderson, and thank you. I'm Patrolman Reed, ma'am. Have you found Kathy? Yes, ma'am. Where is she? You better come with me, ma'am. place we should have looked for that kid. was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring. Not even the mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama and her kerchief and I and my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Way to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw open the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh, an eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his course as they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the tops of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. Bobby! Mommy! Daddy! Merry Christmas, Kathy! Kathy, baby! Oh. 
Hey, it's Christmas. We don't cry on Christmas. I thought... Oh, baby. Baby. Hey, how about a big hug for me? Oh, Daddy. Ah, that's my girl. Where's Miss Buff? I was in bed. She was reading to me. In bed's the place for you. Come on, I'll carry you. Buff! It's Mommy! It's Daddy! I know, darling, I know. Hello, Buffy. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Buff. We had to make an emergency landing in Newfoundland. Small field communications were shot. That storm... Yes, yes. Let's not talk about it anymore now. Buffy was reading me a wonderful thing about the night before Christmas. Here. I'll put you in bed, Kathy. There. There you are. Read it to us, Buffy. Hmm? To all of us. Oh, well, I um, lost my place. I... Read it, Buffy. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the courses they flew with a sleigh full of toys. And St. Nicholas, too. And then in a twinkle, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back and looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word that went straight to his work and filled all the stockings. And turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down on a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard Miss Greer Garson in a dramatization of Twas the Night Before Christmas. Tonight's production in Autolite's Suspense. Miss Garson will return in just a moment. Next week on Suspense, our star will be Mr. James Mason, who as Lord Essex plots to capture Elizabeth's throne. It's called The Queen's Ring. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Chorus was under the direction of Roger Wagner. Twas the Night Before Christmas was written for Suspense by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. In tonight's story, Anne Whitfield was heard as Kathy. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Irene Tedrow, Mary Lansing, Charles Calvert, Howard McNear, Herb Butterfield, Johnny McGovern, Sidney Miller, Joseph Kearns, and John Ramsey Hill. And here once again is our lovely star, Miss Garson. Harlow, thank you very much. And thank you, Anne Whitfield. While I have these few moments, may I join the Autolite family in sending holiday greetings to our friends everywhere. Merry Christmas, Harlow. Merry Christmas, Greer. Merry Christmas to all. And to all, a good night. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> 